not a lot. Um, you would, you know, actually we have a lot of data given the number of mothers who undergo ultrasound now. Um, and although I think parents, a lot of parents believe that boys are more active prenatally, in fact, um, the existing data don't really support that. Some studies do see higher activity levels in boys before birth, but others see no difference, and a few even see higher activities in girls. So um, we definitely know boys are more active by about two years of age or even one and a half. Um, but before birth, it's, it's not quite apparent. Probably the biggest difference between boys and girls we know before birth is that uh, boys do seem to develop a little bit more slowly, maybe a week or two um, less mature by the end of a 40-week gestation. And that actually is, is a problem for babies who are born premature. It's pretty well known in the neonatology world that um, premature boys have a higher, much higher risks than premature girls, and even in terms of basic survival. Um, so something about um, uh, the the Y chromosome or the cascade of hormones that it that it triggers uh, does seem to slow the male development a little bit that that uh, affects boys. Um, but behaviorally, there isn't a whole lot that jumps out at you. in some ways and not in others. Um, and so it's, it's not really possible to say, you know, girls mature more quickly than boys. Yes, in many ways they do, but not in, in every way. And, um, you know, the brain is, uh, has lots of different circuits, a lot of different abilities, and um, there's not a single pattern for male versus female development. Um, Boys uh, definitely are, are slower to develop in terms of language. Um, this has been known for some time. Um, but to put numbers on it, there's about a one month difference between girls and boys in terms of the number of words they speak. So at 20 months of age, um, uh, a little girl may have a vocabulary of a couple hundred words, and a little boy may uh, have a vocabulary of uh, 30 or so fewer words, and then he'll catch up by a month and so on. So, um, But in some ways, the boys, when we talk specifically about verbal skills, they don't ever fully catch up. Um, this is one of the gender differences, you know, in verbal skills that we see even adult, in adults. Although this notion that women speak 20,000 words a day and men speak 7,000 <laughs> words a day um, is just uh, sort of an urban myth that I hope has finally been uh, debunked. Um, the, the verbal differences and almost all of the cognitive uh, differences are really quite small, like a tenth or two tenths of a standard deviation uh, across the population. So they're not as large as we tend to magnify them. Well, there, there, there's no question that there are innately programmed differences between boys and girls. Obviously their bodies are different and um, some of those same cascades of genes and hormones we know are affecting the brain. Um, although we're still years away from knowing exactly which circuit is affected in boys versus girls. Um, but behaviorally we know that um, boys are more active as I mentioned um, and really one of the strongest differences that, that is probably hardwired, if you will, is, is the fascination with moving objects. And um, boys are um, definitely more interested in trucks and balls, and every parent will tell you that, and it's, it's true. In fact, it's just about the largest sex difference there is. Uh, only sexual preference itself is um, actually a larger difference between males and females than this difference in toy preference. It's much larger than the verbal differences, spatial, even things like um, uh, empathy and um, uh, self-esteem, which are areas of concern, These are, those differences are much smaller than the difference in toy choice. Take a three-year-old boy, a three-year-old girl, put them in a room with a choice of toys, and you will see a pretty clear uh, separation. But what's interesting, and, and I, I like to focus on toy choice because um, I think um, on the one hand, it, 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 it definitely shows us the, the, the strong biological roots of, 
of sex differences. But on the other hand, um, as toy choice morphs over the preschool years, uh, we start seeing the role of social influences. So uh, up to the age of about 12 months, interestingly, boys and girls don't differ a lot in, in toy choice. Um, boys and girls both, it turns out, really like dolls <laughs> up to about one year of age. And I think that's because um, dolls are, have faces and every baby is uh, riveted by the human face. It's pretty much their favorite thing to look at, which makes a lot of sense. Boy or girl, you need to focus on faces because those are the people who are going to nurture you. Um, and then what happens is as children uh, branch out and they get more mobile, when they're given a choice, you'll see this truck versus doll distinction about age three. But interestingly, when you follow the, the same children out to about age five, what we see, at least in Western societies, is that um, now boys are avidly avoiding anything girl, even more at age five than age three. You know, they'll spend only 10% of their time exploring a, a doll or a pink tea set. But the girls, by age five, are now splitting their time 50-50 between the building toys or the Power Rangers and the, and the toy vacuums and toy, toy tea sets. So I think what this shows us is the role of our culture. And um, certainly children with more open-minded parents show more cross-gender play than parents who are more discouraging of that. Um, but in addition, if you, if you look at what's happened to girls in the last several decades, uh, they have been told you can do anything, you can have any career, you can wear anything, you can wear pants or skirt, and, um, and sure enough, they have much greater latitude to explore um, a range of interests, whereas boys, um, there's still very strong prohibitions against them wearing anything feminine or doing anything that's regarded as traditionally feminine. So, you know, it's culture acting on top of biology, which will magnify some differences and minimize others, uh, depending on how culturally significant they are.